People have a lot of feelings about Disney World, especially on the internet. We found our favorite one-star Yelp reviews, and we're putting them to the test. One star? I thought you said we were doing five stars. No. Five star, I thought. I thought these, you were doing the good ones. These are a lot what? of feelings what? involved. <laughs> So here's how the game is gonna work and hopefully you can play along at home. We have our incredible actors here at All Ears Net. Oh and we pulled our favorite One Star Yelp reviews. They're gonna do their best dramatic reading oh of it. Boy. You don't know what any of these, I've, again, I haven't shown you any no. of these attractions. I asked him to send me the shot list and he said no. So these are these are attractions, <laughs> shows, and quick service or even table service restaurants. Okay. You're gonna guess off of these One Star Yelp reviews what we're actually talking about. If you're correct, you get a point. Then at that point, we're gonna test them out and give them our own Yelp review from one okay. to five stars, yeah? Okay, got it. All right, here is our first Yelp review. Roll the did tape. Did you turn us directly into the sun on purpose? I did, because better lighting that way. A rage haiku. Why is this so lame? I can walk faster than this. Waited 40 minutes. <laughs> um, I want the second review. Okay. I appreciate the haiku. <laughs> Me too, I love creativity. <laughs> I did not enjoy this attraction. I was immediately teleported back to the 405 during rush hour traffic. It's a good adulting simulator for children, I guess, preparing them for the day they too become a corporate drone, getting in their metal death box to crawl five miles per hour down the road and gesture rudely at fellow commuters. Will not ride again. Tomorrowland Speedway. Yeah, that's really good. That was a really good review. Tomorrowland Speedway is an attraction here in Tomorrowland where you drive in little cars around a track. Now this one, it's definitely not one of the most popular rides. It used to be a least favorite of mine in all of Disney World. Uh, it's especially rough because it is very noisy. It smells like diesel gas and it is very, very hot if you do it during the daytime because you are driving on asphalt in metal cars. Hey, how long were we in line? This is just like when we park our real car. <laughs> and it takes us forever to find our car? Yeah, and it's all the way at the end. Oh. <laughs> it's not our car, it's your car. <laughs> I'm just always in it. <laughs> I know. I live there. <laughs> it's my house. <laughs> all right, let's see if this is really worth the one star reviews. Oh, <laughs> God. We're off to a great start. We are off to the races. Already I'm frustrated. But you say that we can both walk faster than this. Ooh. One maybe, of us can. Maybe, yeah, I think so. I don't love this ride. Oh gosh. I do when I'm riding it at night and I'm in gremlin hour. Yes. I love this ride. There's nothing better. Why is our car slowing down? I mean that's probably driver error. We're racing these children next to us and we are winning. I, but I also think we're running out of gas because the people behind us are like right Yeah, but well, we can't go any faster. So, well that was a, that was something. All right, we experienced Tomorrowland Speedway. We did. And do we think that it deserves the one star Yelp review? So after every single uh, correct guess, we are gonna go and we're gonna review it, give it our own uh, one star uh, yeah, Yelp review. So before you even get into it, do you think it's uh, one out of five stars? What would you rate Tomorrowland Speedway on Yelp? I would rate it a two. I would too. I would think the exact yeah. same thing. I wanted to give it a three because I do enjoy it sometimes, but it really is something. The only times really to ride it is either in the dead of winter or, or at night. Yeah. It, it's, we are riding it in the hot sun at four o'clock and it was terrible and I feel like our, our car was uh, losing gas as we went and there was so much leg. There was so much leg. <laughs> there, like, like so much leg in there, a tiny space. The, the, the cars are small and it's, it can be tricky for um, people who aren't adults to press the gas pedal down because your foot can get tired after a while and I don't, I'm not saying, oh, you're so lazy, Sage, in your foot. You need to do more foot strength, Sage. The pedal's hard to press. It is. Kiddos do love it because kids can't drive real cars. But if you can drive a real car, this is less fun than that. And, and driving a real car is not that fun. The other reason it's a two is because it's actually not as fun as 
go-karts because you don't get to actually go around uh, like different parts of the track. You don't get to pass people. You are literally on the safest one-line track that you could possibly be on. Uh, and unless you're bumping into people, which they tell you not to do, there's not a lot that can go wrong. So it's fun to do at night from time to time, fun to do with your friends because you get to laugh. But for the most part, it's a two. Nothing personal, but I hate this ride with all the passion I can muster. The sickening music just never stops. I feel like the ride won't stop. On the bright side, it would make the very best shooting gallery. There are two reviews. I can give you the second review if you're not quite sure what it is. However, at that point, you'll only get one point, if that makes sense. So okay. if you answer it now, you get two points. But if you need the second review, it'll go down to one point. And if I answer it wrong, it's nothing? It, then, then you get nothing. I'll take the second review. The second review. I didn't want to bring this up. I didn't want to be the person to say this, but I absolutely cannot stand this ride. There are several reasons. Unfortunately, this is the first thing that pops in my head when I think of Disney, actually. The dolls are incredibly creepy. The song is annoying, and it will be stuck in your head all day. It is a very slow ride. So I guess the one plus is that my kids can kind of ride it. It's not a good ride. All right, I, I should have gone with my guess because I think I was right. Is it? It's a small world? Yeah! Woo! And now we go ride it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we are approaching It's a Small World, a classic attraction here in Magic Kingdom. Classic well, wow, where you cruise through the uh, world, all the different countries, and see children from around the world represented in doll form singing the earworm that is the It's a Small World song by the Sherman Brothers. It is a very classic, very famous, very historic attraction. The original version debuted at the 1964 and 1965 World's Fair. And for many, it is considered a must-do based on how classic it is. But not everybody loves it so uh, it's a small world we're gonna ride and decide how we feel about it I think this attraction is exactly how it's described classic Disney family friendly for all all ages something that is historic based on the things that have come after it uh, because of inspiration from it's a small world yes the song with the song was actually written by the sherman brothers and if you're familiar with the sherman brothers uh they are you know in charge of many earworms like there's a great big beautiful tomorrow many of the songs from mary poppins uh they, they are disney music legends so i can't poo poo on it's a small world too much but as far as everything goes, I'm, I think I'm gonna have to, um, man, this is tough. I, I, I okay. So as someone who comes in, okay. Crisis. Here's what I'm gonna say. If you are hating on the ride because it's cool to hate on the ride, then I poo poo on you. Because I think, I think it is fun, it, it's like a fun craze to hate on It's a Small World yeah. because of, oh, the, the song and, and the children and it's creepy. Like, I get it. But, but like, <clears throat> form your own opinions. Overall, I think I'm gonna yeah. give it a three out of five. Yeah. I am gonna give it a three out of five as well. Um, but that said, I think it is at the top of the must-do list, frankly. Good for you. I think you need to do It's a Small World on a Disney trip. I think it's part of a Disney trip. And so I'm putting it at the top of the must-do list, despite the fact that I think it's only a three out of five attraction. Yeah. The scenes are beautiful, but there's not a lot of like variety. There's fun effects, fun practical effects and stuff, um, but just three out of five. Yeah, it's not bad. I don't think it's a must-do for every Disney trip, but if you've never been to Disney before, it's historic, so definitely make sure it's on your must-do list yes. for at least your first Disney trip. Yes. All right, this is your second review. I'm ready. Step right up, folks. A night filled with unrelenting heartburn price at $11, not including a soft drink, awaits you. Where not only will you think back on all those times you bypass stopping to pick up a hot dog at Costco with a drink that would only set you back $1.50 because it wasn't up to par, only to realize that you paid nine times as much for something that actually tasted worse. So bad that after a few bites, this dog went straight to the trash. Looks like this is a home run. I mean, oh... Can I say what my guess would be, but then ask for the second review? Well, now if you ask for the second review, you don't, you don't, you, you, then you'll, you only get one point. What if I always want the second review? 
<laughs> then you can, then you can, that's fine too. I just want the second review. <laughs> okay. A captive audience will make tons of money. Good service, a product, is not necessary. Last night, we ate a as a last resort with other restaurants being closed or requiring reservations. The manager, well, he should be let go. So I'm glad I asked this because I was actually thinking Fryer's Nook because I think those are offensive hot dogs. But the second review had a note in it that said all other restaurants were closed and Fryer's Nook tends to close early. So I'm going Casey's Corner. You are correct. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we have made it to Casey's Corner. This is um, a really, really popular spot. It is often super slammed around peak meal times where you can find hot dogs and corn dog nuggets. Uh, lots of classics like that. It is super popular. They've got foot long hot dogs and they have large sodas here, which you cannot find everywhere. It's just classic stuff. There's not a ton of options on the menu, but it does have a lot of things that people really like to keep coming back to. For instance, we get the corn dog nuggets all the time because they're just a great kind of snacky lunch to have. Uh, I also have a big fan of their plant-based Chicago style dog, which is uh, awesome for a plant-based dog. But there's a lot of great options here. They have french fries, loaded chili cheese fries. Uh, we eat here all the time. So we're gonna skip out on the snack today because we are Casey's experts, pretty much. I think Casey's is like a Disney staple. Specifically, I'll say Main Street USA staple and it has that old town uh, you know America uh, but as far as the food goes I'll say this in my personal opinion the only redeeming quality of Casey's the food that I have there is the mini corn dogs Wow every time I've had a hot dog there I've never been thrilled with it um, I've never uh, liked you know the 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 weird, you know, celebration flavors has not really been my thing. The only time I go and enjoy Casey's is really for the mini corn dogs. So you had the loaded fries. What? Loaded fries. No. You would like this. No, because every time I get the loaded fries, they're soggy. They and, are soggy. And I just don't do well with that. They're soggy. So similar to Golden uh, Golden Oak Outpost. Yep. I don't love it. So I think while while the corn dog nuggets are five out, of five, five out of five for me, I think Casey's might be might be a two. Whoa. A two out of five. Mine knocked out. I've enjoyed the hot dogs at Casey's. I love the loaded fries. I enjoy I really love the plant-based dog. I enjoy the different they're not amazing. It's like a chili cheese dog. It's very theme park food. It's similar sure. to Cosmic Rays in that way. I think I am gonna go three because like though I like the stuff, it's not a very broad menu. Sure. Um, and I think the classic Disney Worldness of it is what brings it up, and those corn dog nuggets being so amazing, and the cheese sauce, plastic cheese. You know what? I'll hop on that train. I'll hop on the train of three, specifically because one, the the, the classic Disneyness. Two, the main uh, the uh, the corn dog nuggets, and three, uh, the cast members that work there mm, are super so fun, spectacular. and also the. Uh, Casey's Corner, uh, the pianist. Yeah. Uh, oh, the pianist. The pianist. Definitely. I wasn't agree. even thinking. That's yeah. on me. Uh, live entertainment is important, and and uh, honestly, pianist is one of the best pianists. Uh, like uh, his so ragtime yeah. stuff that he is just Amazing. unreal. So yeah. three. I like how five. you score things. I like that you give a factor for each. Point. Yeah, you That's got fun. to. But uh, on to the next. On to the next. <laughs> in a nutshell. No plans to watch again. The idea is cute, but the execution is so dated. I appreciate the past, but the constant sound of the animatronics overpowered the sound of the music. My kids are too old to overlook it as well. I'd recommend kids four and under for sure. The songs are all right. I I know this one. I don't need the second review. Re okay. okay. Enchanted Tiki Room. Yeah, good yeah. job. Good job, Gary. Yeah, we'll go. The Enchanted Tiki Room is about a uh, 10 minute uh, animatronic show where animatronic birds, animatronic plants, uh, tikis, they're all singing songs of the South. Wait, wait, we forgot to wake up the glee club. Jim P said, all there was in this hut was a waterfall, some talking electric birds, and some lame smoke effect. 
It was very boring, and I do not recommend going there. After watching the show, we found this like little bench right outside of the tiki room. Yeah. Uh, you know when you come here so often, you start to question how long things have actually been here. This bench has been here. I I think it's a, I think it's new and it's a feat of imagineering. I don't know that it is, mm -hmm. or it or that it is. This bench is immersive. I am going to rate the tiki room. Okay. And I think that I am going to give this one, and I'm so sorry for this, a two out of five. Oh wow. I am not a huge tiki room fan. I love it from a nostalgia. From a uh, historic perspective, this is the attraction that originated with the original Disneyland version, originated animatronics, it's amazing. I find it to be fun and funny and sweet and enjoyable. I think it is skippable on almost every Disney trip and I have and did. Um, the biggest thing working in its favor is that you can't eat Dole Whip in there, which I think is like the peak vibe. Well, I mean, you can eat most things in there. They're yeah. not going to... It's, it's, it's not it's totally Dole Whip. Totally oh, whoa. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Is that We're a root beer float? Corn dog away. <laughs> corn dog. Oh, Dole Whip Is exclusively, that please. Soft serve? <laughs> it's weird non dairy in here. Um, I think that the characters are really wonderful. I think the songs are really wonderful. Um, and I, 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 I'm going to give it a three because I feel like a two is bad. You know what I mean? No, you said it first. You said two. All right. Well, <laughs> oh, time. No, and the reason I want you to keep it is two is because I'm actually gonna give it a four out of five. Oh. And the reason that is, is because um, I think this is the perfect place to, similar to the People Mover, the perfect place to not only continue your day, continue to see an attraction, but to also wind down. Uh, so point number one, so what I said four out of five, right? So number one, uh, it's historic because of all the Disney birds, uh, and the uh, the history it has with it being one of, one of the first animatronics that Walt worked on. Number two, uh, the tropical uh, the window outside with the volcano. If I've always said if I could have that window in my bedroom when I was going to sleep, absolutely, that's what I would fall fall asleep to. Number three, like you said, you can eat inside. Uh, it is a great uh, and it's cold inside, so you can eat and enjoy your snack and kind of wind down. And number four. I'm a fan of the songs. I think the songs are fun, and I love that it goes 360 degrees around you. Um, it's a great, it's it's fun, it's silly and immersive, and it makes you feel like it's classic Disney. Is that a hot take? Probably, but I, I really enjoy it. Every attraction can't be amazing, super exciting, because you need those to wind down. Filler attractions are important. Yes. A very poor showing for Disney on this one. I mean, I love a good dark ride as much as the next guy, but. This was really subpar. Not a single cool effect. I mean, why waste the space on this one, Disney? Little kids don't even watch this movie anymore, do they? Do they? I should note that do they and do they was in all caps with four exclamation points. Um, okay, I would like the second review. I can't narrow this down. Okay. The worst ride we went on in Disney, no question. Our second day in Magic Kingdom, we tried to get all of the rides we didn't get to on the first day. This was one of them. There wasn't much of a wait, if any. Now we know why. After being amazed at the detail in Star Wars rides, or Epcot buildings, or 3D fun rides, you get to see looking very blah and cheaply put together. Seriously! She was the worst looking character figure in the park. No moving mouth, boring movement. Got it. I got it on that last line. Really? I think so, which is not what I thought it was from the first one. I literally had ruled it out. I'm going under the sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid. Wow, I'm impressed. Yeah. That was, that you is, think, why? It took the last line of the animatronic looking bad and the mouth not moving. That's Ariel. Oh. Her mouth doesn't really move anymore. That's sad. Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid is a slow moving dark ride where you board a clamshell and you see a retelling, a short retelling of the classic movie Little Mermaid. A really cool special effect where you appear as if you're actually going underwater. And I think 
I think one of my favorite animatronics in all of Disney World. I think I can Sebastian. say that. Yes, Sebastian. No, uh, Ursula. She's looming. She is uh, really lifelike. It's every time I see it, I, th I think she might be my favorite. For me, this one is going to be a two out of five. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, it is going to be a two out of five for me. Um, Here's what's wild. I'm debating between a four out of five and a three out of five, and here's why. Because I love dark rides, and I love reliable dark rides. For the most part, except on crazy busy uh, days, you can, uh, it's typically a shorter wait, yeah. which I really appreciate. Because this is an Omnimover attraction. Yep. So you sit in a clamshell, but the, the ride vehicles are always moving unless they need to load somebody who they have to stop the train for. And so it can, it's pretty high capacity. Yeah, and, and, and it has some of the best uh, songs, some of the best animatronics. Uh, some great ride scenes. Now, as far as like movie and storytelling, it does jump around a bit. It, and it also, like the my big issue with it, is there's two things. One, uh, maybe I give it a three. Yeah, I, 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 just, I love reliable dark rides, yeah. which is why Winnie the Pooh, which is interesting. because we, we both love Winnie the Pooh. I love Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh would be a four out of five for me. Yeah. But this, this I'll say, is a three out of five. This give, one, the animatronics aren't as, um, like impressive. impressive as like and and because the animatronics are a centerpiece it has more of an effect mm -hmm. than something like Winnie the Pooh where there's not animatronics and sure they're not impressive but it, they're not a centerpiece but they yeah. are here Ursula is amazing but Ariel often looks a little wonky um, the <laughs> uh, music is obviously amazing the scenes are great and I love that we have a newer dark ride that is a classic dark ride like this is a newer dark ride that's about telling the story my big qualm with this is that it completely skips the climax with Ursula. Yeah. Like the entire end of the movie, you just see Ursula kind of thrive in the distance. Yeah. Calamari style. And, um, but I still think, I still think this is a great ride and it's, um, this is the first ride that my, I, we took my best friend's two and a half year old on. This is the second ride I took Violet on. So it's great for the little ones. So I don't know. I think a three is, I feel good about the three. I feel good with a three. I think I, I I agree with the sentiments. It's a it's a new it's a new classic dark ride. Yeah, which, I which like. is nice to have. Yeah. Eh, this one's kind of lame. My fiance and I love. <laughs> we've seen the films, and we were really excited for this show, but it ended up just kind of being like an interactive little kids show. We were really just ready to leave within five minutes of the start of it, but we were trapped in there, and we couldn't leave until the end. I do like the show, but I just didn't like the fact that it was interactive live comedy that used audience members as its joke. We weren't really targeted, thankfully, but we just really didn't find it amusing either. So I've got this one. It's Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Audience participation. Yeah, that makes sense. This is Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor. Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor. <laughs> Already the jokes have started. It's about a 50 minute uh, interactive comedy show where you think it is kind of like a pre-recorded movie but in fact it is live actors, spoiler alert. Uh, it's a really cool technology that, that they use. It is an interactive show where they actually uh, you know, pinpoint different audience uh, members on, the, uh, on their big kind of jumbo screen. Uh, they make them act out Monsters Inc. or they keep going back to them as the callback. It's a lot of fun. So I actually really like this show. I think because they do pick on the audience members, uh, there is a little bit of a, of a repeatability factor, but a lot of times, for the most part, the jokes are the same. So even though there are different audience members, uh, the jokes are the same. Me, personally, I love live entertainment. I think hashtag live entertainment is important. But when it comes to live entertainment all over Disney World, I would rate this um, a three out of five. I'm gonna give it a three out of five as well. Okay, the reason I'm gonna give it three out of five stars uh, pros are it's a shorter show, uh, it's in the AC, it is very funny, I love the fact that uh, live actors are, are, they're all comedians, they're really funny, they really do a good job of what they do, and I love that you can even text in a joke. I absolutely adore this show, um, it's one of my favorites to do, it has been since before I lived here and it continues to be, because of the same reasons it's restful, it's in the AC, but it also is very funny, oftentimes heartwarming, or they'll put like the cutest kid you've ever seen in your entire life up on the screen. Yeah. and the kid is so cute and shy. It's, there's just a lot of really fun stuff in there. Of course, that audience participation is taking or leaving for people. Um, I love it. I love it when I get to do it, which Same. I have. I love it when other people get to do it. I think it's so fun. And it, it's. I love this show. I don't think it's a standout attraction, and it certainly is a skip for me on many occasions just because there's stuff that's more important to me, sure. which is why it's to be right in the middle. But it's not one star. I just don't get it. Is this supposed to be a ride? 
You just wait in line to get on the equivalent of a subway train? I, I felt cheated and deceived. It's weird that they said the equivalent of a train. Because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ask for the second review. Second review. This ride is scary for kids. At a point it stops in the dark and it stays there. This ride is full of it! That's it. Is it People Mover? It is. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I can't believe people feel that way! <laughs> Real talk, have you ever left a Yelp review? Ever? I don't think so. I don't think I have either. No, my brother's a big reviewer. But if you could, if you could leave a one-star Yelp review for anything, anything in the world, what would it be? Oh my gosh, anything in the world? Anything in the world. Jimmy Fallon ride at Universal. <laughs> Over f Fast and Furious? Yes, here's the thing. Like Fast and Furious, I, I can enjoy from an ironic perspective. The Jimmy Fallon ride at Universal, now I, I want to say that this is a personal opinion, as most reviews are. I think there are people who like the Jimmy Fallon ride. I personally liked Jimmy Fallon before I wrote it and now consider him my moral enemy. I Get out. do not like that ride. It made me so sick that I had to lay down on the ground in a theme park. If I was going to leave a one-star review about anything else in the entire world, just any restaurant that leaves the tails on, on shrimp. Take your tails off, Every guys. Every single one. Every single one. Don't be lazy. Salads are really, really bad, and I feel sorry for whoever had to grow those vegetables to be put in those salads. The dressing is horrid, and there is a lot of it. Your safest bet is the chicken tenders. This is kind of the only passable dish. If you really need to eat here, just get the chicken tenders. Cosmic Rays? Yeah! Good job. I also am disappointed in those salads. Oh, All right, we've you. made it in uh, to Cosmic Grace Starlight Cafe. This is a quick service restaurant. It's a really large quick service restaurant um, that is not a favorite, as you can tell from those one star Yelp reviews. But there are some items on this menu we do tend to stop by here that we do like. So we'll have to judge it. We're going to have to judge it. And we're going to do a really clean judgment today by getting a regular cheeseburger. We're not going to get the salad that they said was horrible. We're not going to get the chicken tenders that they said were good. We're going to get a cheeseburger and see how we feel about it. At one point, Cosmic Grace was the restaurant that sold the most cheeseburgers daily, I think, in the entire United States. So 
Uh, cheeseburger is a good way to judge it. But you can find a lot of classics here. This is a great spot to get in so and get some AC. Even during busy times, you can typically find a table. It's pretty dim. And there's the fun part, which is there's a live performer here. Me! <laughs> Sunny Eclipse. Oh. <laughs> if you need toppings, you gotta ask. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want lettuce and tomato or anything? I'm okay without. Thank you so Thank much. You. No, we're okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, Sage. I mean, I got you the stuff you asked for, but I gotta say, coffee creamer is a weird burger topping. But if you want it, anything for you. I. You, you know what I love with my beef? Some cream. <laughs> All right, we've discovered that there is a sauce of some kind on the burger already. It appears to be a burger sauce. I washed my hands. I'm pretty hungry right now, so this will be a good uh, this will be a good time to judge this. All right, burger cheers. Burger cheers. Think about this fairly, though, Quincy. We we are hungry. Honestly, it tastes like a theme park food burger, which is which on a which when you're traveling around on a crazy day, it's not bad. It's better than a cafeteria burger by a lot. It tastes like it's actually like grilled back there. You know what I mean? Like on a on a flat top. And I like the sauce that's on it. I like that it's American cheese that's super melty. There's not a lot of flavor to it, I think. You know when you're exhausted and all you want is just a cheeseburger? This is that cheeseburger. Oh, see, I, I, I thought you were going in the direction that I was thinking. You know when you're exhausted and you make a cheeseburger? That's what this is. This is a lazy cheeseburger. It is a lazy cheeseburger. Because it doesn't have a lot of like things to it. There's not a lot of extra rubs or flavors, but at the end of the day, you're like, still an okay cheeseburger. It's a lazy cheeseburger. Uh, I think I'm gonna go two stars. I know it's a lot, you know, we just had like an okay burger and it's a lower rating than I thought I was going to. You can always rely on Cosmic Rays to be solid theme park food. It's not gonna be that, you're, you're definitely, definitely you're overpaying. You're for sure, it's Disney World, yep. you are overpaying, yep. a thousand percent. That's why I'm giving it a two because it is so, That's fair. but it is just theme park food, yeah. burgers, chicken, uh, chicken fingers. Uh, I do agree with the review a little bit on the, on the fact that I wouldn't go out of your way to get anything like a salad or something special here. I mean, go for the theme park, uh, the theme park regulars like a burger, a fry, the spicy chicken sandwich. We love like, the spicy chicken sandwich. Like those things. Go for go for yeah. the safe bets here. Yeah, for me, I'm giving it a three of five, um, and that's because I do feel like Cosmic Rays is just always there. It's always there. I feel like I end up at Cosmic Rays a lot, just because like it's all reliable. Like, is there anything that spectacular? No. But do I want chicken tenders and a burger sometimes? Yes. Is there seating? Is it inside? Yes. Like, it's definitely, I think, one of the more, like, accessible restaurants. It's great for picky eaters. Yep. Um, it's got mac and cheese for the kiddos that are picky. Like, it's, it's just yep. got the basics. And I think that's good. I think it's worthy. I do not ever recommend this over other stuff necessarily unless that's the kind of vibe you're at. So I rate it two stars and an alien head <clears throat> for a sunny eclipse. You're welcome. Oh. The ambiance is pure magic. Unfortunately, the food is gross. You can find better food on the mobile app Quick Service Restaurants at Disneyland. Also, where's Plumet? More characters! Alright, this one, I fully agree with every word because it is Be Our Guest. Yeah. Can I hear the second review just to be vindicated? Yeah. I rarely give negative reviews, but this one earned it all on its own. Lovely staff, but extremely overpriced, and you could get better food at a local prison. The great stuff was not delicious. All right, Be Our Guest Restaurant. This is a very popular restaurant, extremely difficult reservation to get, serving uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner inside Beast Castle. You can dine in the Grand Ballroom, the West Wing, and the Portrait Gallery, all very beautiful, incredibly themed dining rooms that are absolutely spectacular and probably what makes this restaurant as popular as it is. Now that said, the food tends to be a little bit lackluster for the price, but some folks swear by things like the steak. So it's a controversial one for sure. 
Um, those Yelp reviews are not the only negative reactions. Now, we are not going to do a whole Be Our Guest reservation today for our uh, judgment of this restaurant, but we do have a full review of Be Our Guest on the channel right now that you can check out to see how Emma and I felt at this restaurant. And both Sage and I have done it before, so we are able to rate it. What you think? Boom! Oh. <laughs> Boom! No, um, honestly, I really, uh, these one-star Yelp reviews are honestly, unfortunately, a little bit on par. Yeah. Um, I think they definitely were harsher than I would have been. Yeah. I will give this a two. Yep, me too. Which is higher than I want to, but it's entirely based on the atmosphere. Correct. Because I think that this restaurant, it is $70 for an adult. Yeah, it's a lot. For a three-course meal, and I have not been impressed any of the visits that I've made here mm -hmm. um, with the food. It used to be that there was a quick service aspect to this restaurant. That's what I, that's that's when I preferred it. Yeah, that's what I how I liked it because you got to go in and see the atmosphere without spending just an insane amount of money. Yep. It is not a character dining experience. You do see the beast, but only from a distance as he walks through the room. He walks through the room, he bows, and then he leaves. It tends to be very noisy. The food's not great. So once you have that initial wow, this restaurant is amazing. Look at how beautiful it is in here. The rest of the experience is pretty meh, but. The atmosphere is enough for me to take it off of one star. Ditto. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I think that, I think, we, like, there are some people that love this restaurant. When I talk about my distaste for this restaurant online, I do typically see some comments that talk about how the amazing experiences they've had, how sure. beautiful it is, how delicious the filet is. The filet mignon at this restaurant apparently is very good. Um, so if you are going, I do recommend that based on what our audience says. But. For me, I just think that there are really spectacular experiences for the same amount of money. The only time I think I would absolutely, 100% without a doubt, actually give this place a one-star review is that if you don't get seated in the West Wing or the Grand Ballroom. If you're in that portrait gallery. If you're in the portrait gallery, because that is, one, that is the least themed room. Yes. Uh, and two, uh, if, if we're basing both of our stars off of theme, it's a huge bummer. So it's a cool restaurant. It, is, it really is cool. We did some amazing theming work. It's just that I think for the price and the quality of the food and experience you get, you it's can do better. Yeah, you can do better. Waiting, hoping this musty cave is great. The one star review is because they do nothing about entire families cutting to the front of the line in front of everyone. Apparently, one family member is holding places for the rest of them. This is unfair to those of us who have waited, and because of it, our line has barely moved. There has been at least 30 people to cut to the front. Another one cutting just now as I'm writing this review. Wow. <laughs> They were writing this Yelp review in line. Don't hold places in line, folks. It's actually against Disney's policy. Yeah. And it, it results in reviews like this. Um, okay, um, I, go, I want a second. I think I know what it is, but I want a second. It is very short. Unless you get there when it opens. Don't wait longer than an hour. Very disappointing. Short robot men were creepy. Ah. Uh. I'm glad I got the second review. I was way off. Seven Dwarves Mine Train. What did you think it was? I thought it was Pirates. Oh. Yeah. This is Seven Dwarves Mine Train. Probably the most sought after attraction. All day it's been about a 140 minute wait, which is wild. It is a coaster style attraction where you hop aboard a rocking mine train and you zoom through these Seven Dwarves, their actual mines. Uh, you see some cool animatronics all leading up to Snow White's Cottage where the old hag is knocking at her door waiting to poison her. It is currently down, um, heads up. We weren't gonna ride it anyway because we were here in the middle of the day. And typically the only way to ride it is by either getting individual lightning lane, uh, rope dropping it first thing in the morning, or waiting all in a long line, which we don't have that uh, luxury today. Or riding last thing at night. Or last getting thing at night. Line right before the park closes. Absolutely. But we're, we're, uh, we have bigger fish to fry today. So instead, enjoy this reenactment of us on, on Seven Dwarves Mine Train. All right, here we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa okay. The, the swing. Yeah, it's, it's swing. swing. That's yeah, crazy. It's really fun. That's crazy. Yeah, okay, we're, we're going down. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, we did. Yeah, oh, 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 dopey. Oh, look at oh. all the hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi -ho. Hi -ho. Hi -ho. It's on to where we go. And then we're going downhill. Oh, okay, whoa. Ah. <laughs> and then oh, we're at oh, the. Look. 
Snow White and the Witch. Yeah, and the Witch. And, the and, witch. Oh, and they're dancing. Oh, don't, don't, don't open the door. Uh, she gonna get you. Don't, use don't open the door. I'm glad we're off that. That was so fun. My hair is messed up on that. Thrilling poster. adventure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thoughts. Uh, stars. Oh, this one's really hard. I take it back. This is the hardest. <laughs> I know exactly what I would rate. Go it. ahead. You go ahead. I'm gonna give it. I am gonna give it three. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm gonna give it three is because it is a great family style coaster. On the thrill level, it's not as thrilling as Big Thunder Mountain, but it is more thrilling than Barnstormer. So I think if your kid uh, is, is accomplishes Barnstormer and is good to go there, or if a kid, but if a first time coaster rider uh, accomplishes Barnstormer and is good to go there, I think Seven Doors Mine Train is the next step. Agreed. I think there's some great animatronics. Uh, it is very short, and I don't think it is worth the extremely long line and the hype that it gets. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I'm also gonna go three. Two things I wanna point out about this ride is that I absolutely love the dwarf uh, animatronics. Short robot men were creepy. Mm -hmm. They are some of the first that use projection faces. And yep. I remember seeing them for the first time and feeling like the dwarves were actually in front of me. And it was very magical. So that's on this ride and it's really spectacular. Yep. And also the uh, Snow White and the dwarves and the evil witch figures at the end are um, holdovers from the Snow White dark ride, which yep. was a favorite of mine, Snow White Scary Adventures in this park when I was a kid and I miss it all the time, but I can still see my favorite scene of Snow White dancing with the dwarves on this ride. So that's really important to me too. So that's why I like this ride. Those are my two big reasons, um, but I agree otherwise with everything. I think three of five is a good rating. Okay, and your overall score is out of 20, 16. All right. Yeah, That's not bad. Good. You did really That's good. It's pretty good. I look forward to seeing who can beat that record next time we check out some more one star reviews. Ooh, I'm scared. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch our massive trader competition in Disney World. Mm, what? See you there. That is not a one star. It's five stars, five baby. Stars, five out of five stars.